Hi, everyone. Welcome to my talk on a symphony of sound gone mobile. Now, let me just give you a little bit about myself. Uh, as I said earlier, I'm a developer from South Africa in Durban. Work on uh, mainly mobile, doing mobile web games. So today, I thought I'd try a little thing a little bit different, um, and that is to have a demo, a live demo. So please don't curse me. Okay, so now I actually need everyone to participate if they can, to pull out their phone, their devices, hit the Wi-Fi, and start, go to that address in a matter of seconds. Cool. If everyone can just head on over there. While you do that. So what we're going to do is we're going to try and get the whole, everyone's, if you can just pump up your volume, you're going to try to use your phones then to control all the various sounds. Let's start here with, oh, sorry. We've got some sounds playing. Clearly no. That's great. Sorry. Ten dot eleven dot thirteen dot one four eight port eight thousand. I hear some sounds. Okay, we'll have one person playing sound. Yes, go jet. Pump it up. Okay, let's try with everyone else. I hear some noise in the back. Any other ones? All hands up for those who are playing. There. Well, that went smashingly. Anyway, but that, that wasn't that important. What I wanted to mainly speak about was that working about with sound on mobile, what, what you have to come across, what some of the issues you'll do. The main goal of this is that to get people to understanding what actually happens when you're going to play with sound on mobile. What are some of the quirks? What are some things I need to look at so you're not sitting there bashing your head against the wall? And then I want to try to talk about going to about synchronizing sounds across the devices. Um, audio. Audio is relatively simple to play on any device. As you can see, using HTML5 audio, we'll just create a new instance audio, set up the source, hit load, and play, no problems. Now, you think that that would obviously work. It won't. That doesn't work, unfortunately, on mobile. Why? The, the main thing that you've got to understand is that depending on the operating system as well as the actual browser, you, you can't just go and play a device. With iOS specifically, I know Remy Sharp's done a lot of work on all of this. Thank you, sir. Um, that you can't lo the load, they won't load the sounds, uh, iOS 5 and below, and then as well as it won't also play the sound after play. You actually need the user to initiate play, and Chrome on Android has the same issue. So in order to not only load but play sound, you actually need to get that user input up front, otherwise, as you can see, not much will happen. So solution. Using the auto buffer and preload to preload it up front and then adding a event listener for touch start as the user goes and basically interacts with the phone, go to call, call play, it will go up and play it, auto buffer will then automatically start loading. And at the same time, you obviously don't want the user to start freaking out as they touch their screen because sound starts playing. Add a listener to play as well, which then as soon as it kicks in, you send it to your, go away, you basically send it to a force pause which will then basically stop, 
stop it immediately, remove those vent listeners, and basically keep it for later, so that any time you need to call it later, it'll go back and play. So you're thinking, cool, well, Web Audio API, that should be much easier. You don't have to worry about all these various inconsistencies with the HTML5 tag. You've got uh, sprite issues, which I believe someone's talking about sprites later today. So hopefully they'll cover some of those little bit of nasties. So let's take a look at basic. This is grabbed this morning of Can I Use, what the current support for Web Audio is on uh, mobile. As you can see, there's not much. Thanks to the Chrome guys for shipping it, I think, about two, three weeks ago in version 29. Definitely made life a lot easier. So you're looking at iOS 6 and above, and then Chrome for Android. Everywhere else doesn't really support it. Um, I believe Firefox for Android, they're looking at possibly bringing that in as well, now that it's unstable. Thank you, Chrome. So a very simple function pulled off from HTML5 rocks on how to basically load up a, a player sound passing through the buffer. Very straightforward, simple, create your buffer source, set it, play it, no issues. Again, on the phone, it won't work. And you probably will be like that because none of your sound is ever playing. But thankfully, it's, it's very simple to remedy. You haven't got the loading issues that you have of the audio tag, you've just got the playing. With iOS as well as, again, Chrome, uh, the user has to actually initiate that initial play. So using the hack that we did earlier, we can actually just put that in there, play the sound up, put even to your create a master gain node, which basically set the volume to zero, and just play it off for a second or so, stop it, and the next time you come back, there should be no issues you can carry on playing. So it's actually quite nice. And with, with the web audio, um, just while playing around, is that it's, as everyone always says, it's very responsive. Um, there's so much you can do with it, and, and the support on the devices that have got it, uh, that do have it, is actually quite good. So now, the, the thing which is, every time I've brought this up with someone, they always said I'm crazy. And maybe I am a little, synchronizing sounds. Now, the whole idea behind synchronizing sounds was, today for those that did play, was to have, basically you can play it all for a server and everyone will then get it all across. So what does that actually entail? Latency. That's the core bit of being able to synchronize sounds. You need to know what the latency of every device is, because the last thing you want is to be able to say, OK, everyone play from the start, and then three seconds later, this device starts playing and that device starts playing. So you've got to, when working with this, you've got to really factor this into mm -hmm. your code. Just a brief explanation of latency, thanks to Wikipedia. So latency is a measure of time delay experienced in a system. So in this case, we're mainly interested in, especially with mobile and the radio, how long did it take to hit my server and then return to get it. So this is something that I was using to calculate latency. As you can see, all I basically did was I pinged my server with the current time, and then the server will respond back with the time that it was received along with the original time. That then lets me say, okay, well, how much was basically the round trip? And here I divide by, well, divide by two just to get a latency one direction. But that, of course, isn't 100% accurate because latency can vary from either side. But this gives you a good round instance of what it is. And then the response received, sorry, there we go, latency. What the thing with latency is, of course, it's always changing. So that one little function won't do much use. It'll, constant, it'll return a value, and then two minutes later, all of a sudden, latency shot up. You're still not synchronized. So I found what, what probably works best is to you constantly ping your server, getting, calculating the latency and storing all of that in an array, and then using the mean latency. So of course, very, put it very simply, just push it all in the array, get the middle instance, and use that. I found that that works quite nicely. When I was testing earlier, I was, managed to get easy four or five devices to sync perfectly across with no problems. So when, when, a, when you're applying your latency, once you've got it, there's no use to say, okay, cool, I've got my latency, I'm going to push play, what's going to happen? You actually need to factor this in. So to cater for this, what, what, I, what I've found that is the, probably the easiest way to do is whenever you're sending from the server to go and play, to actually add the latency to that start time so that you can then estimate that each device, when they receive it, they'll have a start time of one second, plus then their latency, they all should start roughly at the same time, if not the actual sound, but the sound instance will be then the same. Some, some more interesting things about uh, 
audio and latency and all those is that audio responsiveness differs. So from that of using the audio tag to, the H uh, to web audio API was that it takes up to a second just in order to instantiate that play on an, with the audio tag. So if you're going to be using a situation like such on mobile where you want to have multiple devices, you're going to have to cater for both of them. And you have to then worry about if you tell the web audio to play, guaranteed it will play near instantly, but then about 500 milliseconds later, the audio tag will play, which then gives you that kind of like stereo kind of uh, late, latency effect. To do this, probably the best thing is to then buffer that time a little bit more. So whatever your latency is, increase it by give another, another second or so which just then pushes that out and hopefully gets everything synced across. So, um, some other more interesting things is, of course, depending on the sound, you can actually have leeway with your difference between various devices. What I found is that if you have a, a basically a monotonous tone, of course, it'll make no difference because there's no, not many changes in notes. And if, you're, if it's a fast-paced tr uh, track with multiple changes, you will notice that a lot more if whether that is half a second off or less. So just going over to, to recap on some of the things that with, when working with audio with mobile, things you need to bear in mind is that the user needs to initiate load and playback with the audio tag. This is iOS, this is on Android, all of them. Use the preload attribute as well as the a, a buffer, auto buffer, that is unfortunately deprecated. So preload with auto with auto should do the suffice. Based that will every time you click play, immediate load, because calling the load in iOS actually won't load the sound. Web Audio API, you've got the same instance. The user needs to actually instant initiate that playback with using a touch interface or whatever else. Um, with latency, latency is constantly changing, so just bear that in mind when trying to go. It's, you, you need to always make sure you're getting the either the mean latency, because average, the last thing you want is you get one spark and your average gets thrown out exponentially. Um, use U U T UCT timestamps. That's catching for different time zones. Um, easiest thing for, to communicate with server and client, of course. And then factoring in latency when scheduling the start time for audio. Taking that start time, adding it on, and carrying on. So resources, one of them is Remy Sharp's Audio Sprouts. I'd highly recommend that because he talks a lot about some of the iOS fixes that I mentioned here today, um, where you, what you actually need to do. And there's, a nice, there's another little issue when you're trying to seek through and set the current time with the audio tag, which actually just doesn't work. So he's found a nice little hack around to do that. Um, also, the Web Audio API book by Boris Moos. It's I would highly recommend that. If you don't know much about audio, or even just the Web Audio API. This is actually a really great resource to get you through. HTML5 rocks. Also, they have an intro to the Web Audio API. Highly recommended, as well as Sounds of Racer. This was a really interesting, because there they actually start t t talking about how they used um, various algorithms to calculate latency for the game, and some of the issues that they came across, which, funny enough, was similar to the ones that I was finding. Thank you. Um, I'm Wi-Fi, as you can see. Nick DaCosta on G+, Twitter, at Nick underscore DaCosta. Um, if you have any questions, more than welcome to either come find me or give me a shout. I think we've got some, quite a bit of time for questions. Yep, we definitely have time for some questions. Um, Judd's also wandering around in there, too. So put your hands up if you've got questions. OK, we've got one mm. over here. I don't see anyone. Um, can you comment on uh, whether there's any difference between the Web Audio API inside of Chrome for iOS compared to Safari for iOS? Because obviously it's the web view, mm. the JavaScript engine is slightly different, it's not as fast. I've, I've found one odd difference, which is more like about a browser bug, but mm. whether there are any, any performance differences. Um, I, haven't found, I haven't found much. Um, I don't actually own an unfortunate iOS device, so I wasn't able to test that much on there. Um, but yeah, Said, from what I have done, because at work we've got a few devices, going through all of those, haven't found too many issues with that. Uh, again, the, the sounds that we're playing is very simple, just uh, setting up a sprite playing, going through. I have not found that much. It is, the, I think the this actual issue oh, in terms of performance is quite nominal, specifically for the audio, because it handles quite nicely. Anybody else? 
Uh, actually, he's, he's got another one, if that's cool. Do you know if there's any way to uh, capture that, that audio? Um, so record the audio that you generate on a mobile device. So I know there's a, the offline uh, context that was in the spec. Mm. I don't know whether that's landed at all. I don't know. No. No, I don't think that's actually landed. I could be horribly mistaken. Please, if anyone knows, correct me if I'm wrong. But the, the implementation on mobile is still very new. Um, as I said, with Chrome really only shipping that about earlier this month with version 29, which is the latest one. Um, as, and then, of course, iOS with iOS 6. All right. Thank you.